Hello everybody and welcome back to another Bolo vs video. This episode, we all knew this one was coming. Given the success of my other 40k video, and the fact that I'm a slave to what makes you degenerates happy, here comes the next installment in the series. So we're going to pit the mighty nigh unstoppable Mark 33 Bolos against the biggest the 40k universe can throw at it. The Great Devourer, the Big Amanama, the Tyranids. I could tell you that I wanted to avoid doing this because they border on the ridiculous and the utter, utterly unmanageable in terms of scale, and it would be true. But I also really want to grow this channel and get those sweet, sweet views. So let's milk this cow dry, shall we? Whoa, boy, that Red Bull's some strong stuff. Yeah! All right, so the first thing we are going to do is we are going to look at our combatants in this video because they're going to take the longest. We're going to look at the Tyranids first. Now, be forewarned, this is a really massive, massive oversimplification of the subject matter. Because if I went even to regular detail, we'd be here for well over an hour before I even got to the battles. So, here's the Cliff's Notes. Now, 40k is famous for canon, not being canon, and then being canon again. So much so that it's a meme. No one in their own universe knows where these nightmares crawled from or from when they crawled from. It's estimated they may have been showing up as early as M35 or 36 but mostly cranking up the grimdark up to 11 from M39 onwards. All I'm going to say for certain is I'm entirely sure it's Robo Bean Catcher's fault for lighting up the Pharaoh's device during the uh, Horus Heresy. Either way, now massive high fleets of biological ships are busy plowing their way through the galaxy like a Chinese tank through a pro-democracy protest. <laughs> what? Jesus! That was brutal! Now, usually in advance of these things, these things called gene sealers find their way onto inhabited planets and corrupt the populations into civil war, making their converts believe letting these Tyranopes eating you is a good thing. Honestly, how anyone looks at these awful f***ing abominations and goes, holy shit guys, these four-armed f***ing toothy f might be just a bit sus. Maybe they don't have our best intentions to heart? Yeah, right. Okay, it's 40k. These ugly creatures have psychic and mind control capability to just basically indoctrinate the masses into acting against their own self-interest. And they also act as a giant psychic beacon to all the hive fleets going, hey, dinner's ready, guys. So, after the gene stealers mind f planet populations and set off their psychic dinner's ready sign, the hive fleet arrives and fires spores at the target planet. The spores get dropped on the landing zones where deploying forces range inside from ripper worms all the way up to bio titans. And they also prep the planet's atmosphere, flora, and fauna for eventual consumption by the capillary towers. So, over the generalized period of about 50 days or so, the planet's been subdued, slaughtered, and everything there has been pushed into these pools, and capillaries extend down from the high fleet, and the Tyranids spend the next 50 odd days or so sucking the planet dry of all biomatter like an oversized Capra Sun. And on top of that, they're adaptable as all hell. Every time you defeat them, they evolve a counter. So the only way to stop them entirely is to hammer them all at once, which is pretty much impossible if you've ever seen the size of an actual hive fleet. It's literally on the order of throwing a multiple planetary masses of biomatter at a single fraction of a percent of a planet's mass of biomatter. The scales, people. Let's not forget the scales. There's no negotiating, no hacking them, no appeasing them. It's either fight or die, and in most cases, it's just fight and die. Well, that was wholly depressing, right? So, let's look at our main antagonist and bring up our mood a bit. The mighty Mark 33 Bolo, pride of the Concordia, humanity's finest weapon. The biggest, most heavily arm and armored, AI piloted planetary siege engine in all of sci fi. 32,000 tons of rolling, flying, fighting fury. They never give up, never surrender, and they're armed to the teeth in such a way that the toaster diddlers on Mars would blow their holy unguents all over their robes. To start with, this thing is armed with three 2-meter Hellbore plasma guns, shooting the load every 4 seconds, cranking in at a whopping 5 megatons per second per gun, which is the equivalent of getting clapped by three H-bombs every 4 seconds in an area about the size of an average human body. So yeah. That's a lot of damage! And on top of that, it also has 16 smaller 20-centimeter Hellbore guns, clocking in at 2 megaton per second of energy per gun per shot. And on top of that, rapid fire mortars, rapid fire 2.4 meter howitzers, rapid fire PDF and anti-personnel clusters, rapid fire heavy magazine VLS silos, 
with, mag with missiles that can reach geostationary orbit. They can fly. They've got regenerating shields, multiple redundant armor and shield layers, all driven by a hyper-intelligent military AI containing the sum total knowledge of mankind's history of warfare and doctrine. So yeah, it fucks. And hard. There's no contesting that. Just one of these landing on a planet often requires it to face its own equivalent in combined firepower to bring it down. And that's only if it's been crippled and, say, driven in a, by an incompetent pilot who's never had his machine maintained. And a full-strength unit of these can prosecute a war across an entire sector of space with absolute, unfettered, contemptuous ease. So, now that I've built both of these uh, combatants up, do I honestly think the Bulls would win? In very few specific scenarios, I do believe they could win. On the average, no, not really. What? What the fuck? I don't think they would win. And just because the scales don't match. The Tyranids are written in a way that literally makes it impossible to beat them. Uh, you may drive off or kill a splinter fleet, but ultimately they don't stop coming. It's like trying to fight an act of nature. It's only something Florida man would try. But, so I don't look like a cop-out, I'm going to give you one specific scenario where I think the Bolos could win, and another one where I think, you know, things would play out on the average. So, settle in boys and girls, I'm about to spin y'all a yarn. So, let's take care of a bit of housekeeping before we start the versus battle. We're going to let the Nids go full Leroy on this one, because, well, the Tyranids don't use warp-based weaponry, and the effect that they have on the warp isn't going to affect the battle in any way whatsoever. Gene Stealers will be in effect on the planet prior to High Fleet arrival, and I think that'll pretty much cover for this. Alright, so this is going to be the average, how the average fight is going to go down between Bolas and Tyranids. Gene Stealers are going to build their cults up on the planet. The system sensors are going to detect the High Fleet. Unrest is going to occur. Civil war will happen on the planet. The PDF is going to get overwhelmed, demoralized. The Gene Stealer cults are going to give as much intel as they can about the defenses of the planet to the Hive Fleet, through the Psychic Network. The Bowlers are going to position themselves to counter the invasion in the typical Doctrine fashion of the Dinochrome Brigade, thinking that they're just going to be standard fare of ships. Alright, so this is where the Tyranids are going to get their one and only real surprise once they enter the effective weapons range of the Hellborn guns. And they're going to launch as many spores as possible to try and overwhelm targets once they hit planet side. Meanwhile, I believe the Hive Swarm Lord, or whatever the hell the lead swarm dude is, is going to pull back the rest of the fleet just outside of the effective weapons range of the Hellbore guns while it can evolve a counter to the new plasma weapons that it's facing. The Bolo is detecting that the Tyranids have deployed some sort of biological agent into the atmosphere, attempt to sterilize the landing areas with their ICBM. The Tyranids detecting all this extra energy and radiation sterilizing their landing sites devise a new strategy to try and land a second wave. So they break into two, distract the bolos as much as they can with one while deploying all they can with the other. After two weeks of heavy combat and forced evolution, massive increases in biotitans and the weight of numbers is starting to thin the bolo ranks, being physically ripped apart by these biotitans at increasing numbers. Three weeks in, the final couple bolos just decide to make a suicidal charge towards the capillary towers and detonate their fusion reactors, hoping to take out as much of the fleet as they can. And unfortunately, this is a lot of way that is going to go every time that the Tyranids invade a planet, especially no matter how many bolos you throw on it, except for the conditions that will line out a little bit later. Alright, let's put a little smile on that grimdark, shall we? Here's the scenario where they win, or as I call it, the Grey Goose scenario. Now, this plays out a lot like the first scenario I laid out in terms of how the Gene Stealers operate. The only secure areas left on the planet are going to be the Dinochrome bases, and only because they're meant to hold off larger planetary invasions. The Bolos, scanning their opponents with every active sensor that they've got available to them on the planet, detect they've only got one way to defeat them, and they've only got one shot at doing it because they evolved too quickly to their weapons. Due to what they've seen happen, they know they've lost this planet, the population's gone, there's nothing left to save, but they can hopefully save the rest of Concordia. They reprogram their repair nanites and order them to cannibalize their hulls, turning into a self-replicating Grey Goose swarm, hopefully destroying the entire Hive fleet before they have a chance to evolve to it. 
And that's really the only way I can see the bolt is actually managing to pull off a victory in any numbers other than the scenario I might lay out next. Realistically, and I use that term very loosely, the tonnage differential is just too lopsided in favor of the Tyranids on this one. I feel that the Concordia would be able to hold sufficient standoff distance on a world holding not less than three full regiments of not less than Mark 32s, and realistically only Mark 33s supported by a regiment of Mark 34s would be able to hold off a Tyranid invasion. And I use that term, hold off, again in the loosest terms possible. Because even with the Concordia deploying that kind of firepower on a planet would only temporarily stall a Tyranid fleet. It would hold off until they have sufficient weight of numbers to even overwhelm the Bolo's mind-numbing level of firepower that they can throw against the Tyranids. Because in time, that's all it is. It's a matter of waiting. And the Tyranids have been waiting a very, very long time. And believe me, it really does pay me to say that. Because we all want our favorite franchise to always come out on top. The 40k fans love it when their franchise comes out on top. I love it when my franchise comes out on top. We all love a winner. And, but, the way Qui-Gon said it in Star Wars, there's always a bigger fish. And that's how I see this playing out, friends. Agree or disagree, that's just this geek's opinion. And I'd love to hear yours in the comments down below. Our Patreon is now live. If you want to support this channel on our future Bolo content, including the upcoming audio dramas, which will be debuting this week, the new original Bolo stories written by yours truly, smash that like button, hit the notification bell, and we'll see you on the next Bolo vs. Battlefield, guys. Peace out.